What's up guys? Today we're heading to downtown Los Angeles. I'm going to show you 23 things to do there and hopefully keep this video under 10 minutes. Let's do it. Stop number one takes us to the Broad Museum, which is one of the most popular new museums in Los Angeles. This museum became popular because of its Instagrammable attractions that it has, like the mirror rooms, the big tulips, the American sign, and even the larger than life-size table you can walk right underneath. It's a free museum, but you do need to get tickets in advance, and be prepared to wait about an hour if you don't get tickets in advance in order to get in. Across the street from the Broad, we have the Walt Disney Concert Hall. You've probably seen this crazy architectural feat right in the heart of downtown Los Angeles multiple times driving by, but I would recommend getting out of the car, walking around, taking a tour of the concert hall, walking through the gardens. It's a beautiful area and every time you go, you see something new. Of course, if you get a chance, see a show there as well. It's supposed to have the best acoustics in all of Los Angeles. Recommendation number three is Sky Space, which is in the US Bank Tower. This unique Los Angeles attraction has a glass slide where you slide from the 70th floor to the 69th floor, all completely in glass. The slide goes really fast so you don't have a ton of time to look around, but it's a cool experience that gets the adrenaline going. Also they have two open air observation decks that are amazing spots for sunset. My next recommendation is heading over to Union Station. Union Station is Los Angeles train station that's been featured in movies like Blade Runner. It's many decades old and it's an awesome place to just walk around and explore the unique architecture or to take the train somewhere outside of Los Angeles. From Union Station, head over to Alvera Street, which is right across the street from the train station and is an awesome cultural heritage site in the middle of Los Angeles. Here you can visit the Center Pavilion, go to some of the museums, see one of the oldest houses in Los Angeles, and have taquitos at Salida Lindo. Alvera Street is also awesome during the Day of the Dead Festival, which happens right around Halloween every single year. For a different cultural experience, head over to Chinatown, which is a few blocks up from Alvera Street. This small area has food, shopping, and lots of unique architecture. It also has the traditional Chinese lanterns that go across many of the streets, and it has a wishing fountain that you can throw coins into. My next recommendation is MoCA, which is a contemporary art museum in the heart of downtown LA. While this doesn't have as many of the crazy exhibits like the Broad does, it's still a great place to see some unique art and walk around the two to three floors they have. The giant metal piece in the outdoor lobby is worth visiting just to see that. Next up we have Grand Central Market, which is downtown LA's food court and has been there for decades with lots of unique restaurants coming in and out. Now it's part of the foodie revival in LA with places like Egg Sled, the PB&J Shop, Wexler's Deli, and many others bringing people from all over Southern California to try a unique dish. From there, head across the street to the Bradbury Building, which was also featured in Blade Runner, and which is a super cool piece of architecture that you can explore during business hours. You can't ride the old elevators, but you can walk up some of the old staircases and see the building from many different angles. After that, head over to Angel's Flight, which is a super cool little train that you can ride. It takes you about a block up, and it only costs 50 cents to a dollar, depending on whether you have a Metro Pass or not. No doubt you've seen this fun attraction in some recent movies like La La Land, and it was actually closed for about five years, so it's awesome to have it back open again. My next recommendation is The Last Bookstore. This old bank building was turned into a two-story bookstore, which just has an insane amount of books, but has a lot of other cool things to see as well. Some of those are the book tunnel that you can walk through and the old bank vault, which houses crime novels now. It's a good place to just walk around and take it all in. Close by the last bookstore is Clifton's Cafeteria, which is a famous Los Angeles spot that's been around for over 50 years. This unique cafeteria has all sorts of crazy things for you to see, such as tigers that you can sit next to, a giant three-story tree, and all sorts of weird oddities all around the restaurant. It just reopened a year or two ago and it's a great place to go with your family and just see all the fun stuff that they have there. Next up, I recommend heading over to the Arts District. The Arts District is the up-and-coming downtown LA neighborhood that everybody wants to live at and everybody else comes to to eat at. 
This place has lots of artistic murals on all of the buildings, bunch of crazy places to eat like Wurstkirsch, which has rattlesnake and rabbit sausages, breweries, ice cream, you name it, they have it in the Arts District. It's an awesome place to just park, walk around and explore. Obviously bring your appetite because there's lots you're gonna wanna eat. My next recommendation is if you're in downtown Los Angeles at nighttime. If you are, head over to the Intercontinental Hotel, which is the tallest building on the west coast. From there you can take the elevator all the way to the 70th floor and then another elevator to the 73rd floor to go to the tallest open air bar in the entire country. This is a great place to grab a drink or a snack and to look out over the city lights. My next recommendation is to head down to LA Live, which is right across from the Staples Center Arena, has lots of restaurants, but most importantly has the Grammy Museum. If you're a fan of music, the Grammy Museum is a great place to explore. It talks all about past winners, has instruments that you can play and microphones you can sing into, and has revolving exhibits on things like punk rock and famous guitars. Also, along the sidewalk outside of the museum, there's big records much like the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame that talk about the different artists that won categories during each year of the Grammys. If you're in Los Angeles on a Sunday, which is the only day of the week that this happens, head over to Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord is much like a food truck event where 30 or so restaurants all have little pop-up shops in this one big industrial area. You can walk all around and try things ranging from fried chicken in a waffle cone, shrimp in a pineapple boat, acai bowls, tea, all sorts of crazy stuff. I recommend bringing your appetite and some money just so that you can walk around and try a few different things. There's also a shopping area down the middle that you can check out in between eating. My next recommendation is Little Tokyo. Little Tokyo is in the heart of downtown LA where Chinatown is a little bit north of the city center. This area has a unique mall full of all sorts of Japanese related items, has different restaurants that you can try, and it has one of my favorite places in all of downtown Los Angeles, which is Daikokuya, a ramen place. Be sure to get there really early though if you're going. That spot is always busy, super small, and generally you have to wait at least an hour. Next up we have the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, which is an old church that you can check out while you're in the city. This church is beautiful with a contemporary design and a large open floor plan. You can walk through the entire area or go down into the mausoleum below the church. Obviously be respectful if you visit here. If you're in Los Angeles during a weekday from nine to five, go to LA City Hall. You can get a visitor's pass and you can take the elevator all the way to the top of the city hall and walk around in an open air observation deck they have there completely free. This is a great place to explore as it gives you awesome views of downtown LA and all the surrounding areas. You can even see the Hollywood sign if there's not any smog. From City Hall you can head up to Grand Park, which is another fun place to relax in downtown. This long, narrow park heads up about three city blocks and it gains elevation as you're walking up to the top. Each area has grass with tables and chairs that you can relax at and look out over City Hall and the top has a fountain that children often play in. From here you can head to Pershing Square, which is one of the other popular city parks in Los Angeles. There's not a lot to do in Pershing Square on a daily basis, but there is a park for kids to play on, and during Christmas they have an ice rink here so you can ice skate in the heart of downtown LA. Pershing Square is about a block from the LA Library, which is an awesome place to explore for a few hours during the day. They have a really cool atrium with lots of unique art in it, and on the second floor they have a rotunda that you definitely have to see to believe. My last two recommendations are a little bit outside the downtown area, but they're both great to go visit. First up we have Bob Baker Marionette Theater. This theater on the west side of downtown has been running for over 50 years and has an awesome marionette puppet show the whole family will enjoy. It's a lot of fun during the holidays as well as they often have holiday themed shows with their different puppets. My last recommendation is a visit to Dodger Stadium. You may have been to Dodger Stadium during a game day, but I recommend you visit it when there's no games in town. During normal business hours most days of the week, you can drive into Dodger Stadium, you can visit the company store and actually walk out onto the upper deck, eat lunch and just look out over the beautiful stadium. 
I'm not a huge baseball fan myself, but there was just something cool about being in Dodger Stadium with no one else around. So that's it, 23 spots in downtown Los Angeles for you to check out. Hopefully there's some new ones on there that you hadn't heard of before. And be sure to let me know what I left off that you love in the comments. Thanks for watching this video and head over to CaliforniaThroughMyLens.com for more.